I welcome everyone to yet another uh, anointed service um, at God City Fellowship. And um, this month is our month of effective prayers. Our month of effective Prayer. prayers. Now, I want to start with an aspect that really blesses me. The fact that prayer is a dialogue. So under the, our month of effective prayer, today's title is Prayer is a Dialogue. And I've written on that just to make it clear that you talk to God and he talks back to you. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. So we're going to start from Genesis 127. Genesis chapter 1 verse 27. My interest in prayer comes from the fact that Many people are often frustrated when it comes to prayer. They believe that either God has not answered them, or God is too slow in answering them, or God doesn't want to give them what it is they are requesting for. Many Christians are frustrated when it comes to the things of prayer. So my interest comes from a point of view that how can we be effective in our prayer? You understand? So I know without a shadow of a doubt that Many Christians are already convinced that it's good to pray. So I'm not even going to go down that path anymore. We, we already know that. But how can we pray effectively? How can we get results from our prayer? So Genesis 1.27 says, So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. I was often surprised when I first read this as a kid. What, why is it that God had to emphasize that male and female he created them? But fast forward to today. Look at how confusing they're trying to confuse us out there. Some people are male, some people are female, some people are trans, some people are this. It, they've modeled the water that if I didn't have this verse in the Bible, I would be confused by now. Mm. So that's, that's the wisdom of God for you. He said, People, I'm the one who created you, and I created you in my image, as in God's image. And male and female have created you. So if anybody introduces anything else to it, it does not stand with this scripture. The person may be truly confused about their sexuality. The people may truly feel strongly that they don't belong to male or female. I respect that. But do not force me to accept that as what God created. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So why have I gone to that when it comes to effective prayer? If we are created in the image of God, which means that whatever God does, we should be able to do. That is the link up I'm saying. I'm, if I'm created in the image of someone, Whatever that person does, or whatever that person has, at least physically or anatomically, I should have that too. And I want to submit to you that God speaks. <laughs> Amen? Amen. In Exodus 19, 19, Exodus chapter 19, verse 19, And when the blast of the trumpet sounded long and became louder and louder, Moses spoke. And God answered him by what? By voice. <laughs> so if I'm created in the image of God, if God speaks, I can speak too. Amen. Which means if you reverse it, if I speak, God should be able to speak back to me as well. Just like it's just been demonstrated here, the, the, in, for those who might not understand this Exodus 19, that was when God wanted to speak to his people directly. God did not plan for any prophet to speak on his behalf. But God had made the provision that prophets would speak because he knew that his people would be too scared to hear him, would be too busy to hear him, would be too timid to hear him. So prophet was God's second best provision for humanity. I say that as a prophet of God. God wanted to speak to his own children directly. So he told the children of Israel here, a background to Exodus 19. He told Moses, tell your, the children of Israel to wash their clothes, to take, you know, clean their body, 
you know, to consecrate themselves, I'm about to appear to them and speak. When the noise that came with God's majesty came, the people said, ah, this one is too much. Moses, you go up and speak to God and come and tell us what he says. It was humanity that chose that somebody should be the intermediary between them and God. God did not choose that for them. Are you listening to me? Yes, sir. So God's best is for him to communicate with us directly. So when they, when they had the trumpet, you know, all the punch and pomp and pageantry that attends to God's presence, they were scared. They were scared. So they told Moses, you go up and hear, speak to him. Whatever he tells you, come and tell us. They made themselves secondary. God, God made them a priority. They made themselves secondary. God did not plan profit for, for them before. So Moses spoke to God and God answered him by voice. voice. So God speaks. Hmm. <laughs> wow. And many people might say, oh, it was metaphoric. Metaphoric means something that didn't really happen, but you're using it to explain like it may have happened. Now let's drill it down. Exodus 33 verse 11. So the Lord spoke to Moses, what? Face to face. As a man speaks to his friend, in case some people want to go and get clever and go and redefine it, God broke it down to bits. God spoke to Moses face to face as a man speaks to his friend. And he will return to the camp, but his servant Joshua, the son of Nun, a young man, did not depart from the tabernacle. <laughs> There are two things there that God can speak to man face to face and that those who will become future leaders are those who are dedicated to the tabernacle. That was the Joshua that took over from Moses after God took Moses away. All the others have left. He did not depart from the tabernacle. God was setting us up for us to know why he became a leader afterwards. Amen. Amen. <laughs> so, um, I, I, I insist and I reiterate to anybody who may still be out there doubting, prayer is not a one-way traffic. You don't just keep shouting at God and screaming requests at Him or screaming uh, uh, pleadings with Him or, or, scream, or plea or whatever. It's a two-way traffic. In Jeremiah 33 verse 3, Jeremiah 33, verse 3, and I'm reading from the New Living Translation because I like the way it is said here. He said, ask me and I will tell you remarkable secrets you do not know about things to come. Mm. So there are two parts of that process there. You ask me and I will tell you. you. <laughs> Amen. 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 So prayer is a two-way traffic. And very often, many people have decided to just keep it as a monologue. So you have people praying for one and a half hours, two and a half, just talking to God, not hearing what he has to say back. And wondering why their prayers are not effective. Because they're making God look like a, a, a wicked man that you have to just run around and roll in front of and, and, and wound yourself and hurt yourself before he can answer you. And it's not that. And I will explain what we are meant to do at the end of this, but I'm just building it up to let us know that prayer is a dialogue. In Matthew chapter 7, verses 7 to 8, it actually makes it clear to us, this is in the New Testament, for those who don't bother to read the Old Testament anymore, even though it's still part of the scripture, it's, 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 it's about active listening. Active listening. In Matthew 7, 7 to 8, it says, keep on asking and you will receive what you ask for. <laughs> keep on seeking and you will find Keep on knocking, and the door will be open to you. 
For everyone who asks, receives. Everyone who seeks, finds. And to everyone who knocks, the door will be open. Amen. So the key to this is, after you have prayed, keep on waiting on the answer. Let me give an example to make this clear. Because one of the crimes preachers are guilty of is that you can preach something vaguely without being very clear in your interpretations and meanings. So people write lots of notes down, mm. but they're none the wiser about the topic than they were when they first came in into the, in, into the house of God. So I'm trying not to be guilty of that. So let me give a clear, simple example. I prayed to God two days ago about a personal matter. I've not heard back from him. But I'm waiting on him. Amen. I will not act until he has instructed me about that matter. If that matter comes back to my mind today, as I'm sure it will, I'll say, Lord, I thank you because I know you have heard me. Help me to hear you. Amen. I will not go back to praying the same prayer again, which is the way I was taught in the past. I will, you, you, the prayer you have prayed, you will revisit it again. Oh Lord, as if God was deaf the first time. I mean, it's possible if he didn't hear, he was busy walking or something. You know, oh Father Lord in heaven, you know this thing I spoke to you on Friday, I'm speaking to you about it today again. Wrong. Wrong. If you believe that God is real, and I know he is, if you believe that he exists, and I know he does, if you believe that he loves you, and I know he does, just talk to him once. If that matter has not been resolved, keep thanking him and keep asking him to make you hear what it is he's trying to say to you. Mm. <coughs> simple. Mm. It doesn't mean the matter is simple, but it's, I'm talking about the process is simple. Until God instructs me one way or the other, I will not take action on that matter. Because I've asked for his counsel. And I trust that he has heard me. And I believe he will instruct me. <laughs> so my belief is not that, oh, he didn't answer immediately, or didn't he answer? No, he will tell me what to do. Whether it's one day, two days, 16 days, I don't know. But I know he loves me enough that to instruct me about what I've asked him about. What happens to many of us is impatience. Mm. You pray on Friday, by Friday night, you have not had back. Saturday morning, you're making extra plans. Mm. Now, that plan may work. Because the things you do outside of God is a gamble. 50-50. So 50% of the time it does work for some people that don't even pray. And people are there and look at them. They're not Christians, but it's working for them. Life is a gamble outside of God. You may hit it or you may miss it. <laughs> but if you want a certainty that is not gambling, then you will have to wait on God. If he tells you turn left, you can't go wrong in that left he's asking you to turn to. That's the difference. If you live your life without praying, you might still make some successes just out of eat and miss. Those who know mathematics, what I'm saying, laws of probability. Either this or that. It can happen. You're in the right place at the right time. Something happens to you. You don't need to pray or fast about that. It happens to some people. Roger Moore, one of the James Bond characters, was a waiter in a hotel. The person recruiting for James Bond saw him say, oh, that's a very good looking man. They called him. He was not an actor. He was a waiter. And they persuaded him to come and play James Bond. Can you imagine? A waiter serving them in a restaurant. So that was not praying, that was not fasting, that was that was just um, uh, you know, that, that was that was just fate. That, that, what, what would I call it? That, that was just chance yeah. taking place. So there are some things in life that can happen whether you pray or not. Anybody is married, you, you, you know, you, if you sleep long enough with your wife at some point, pregnancy may happen. So there are some things we don't really, that, but if you are doing it God's way, you want to hear God's opinion, you are interested in the direction of where God wants to take you, then you must be prepared to be patient. And you must be able to trust him. So, the instruction in Matthew 7, 7 to 8 is an active or present continuous matter. You pray and you keep waiting for the answer. Believing that he has heard you and he will give you the answer. 
you knock and you continue to wait for the person inside to say, who is that? And then they open the door for you. You don't just go and knock on people's door and carry on knocking. You'll be an, an irritating person. But that's what most Christians do with their prayer life. <laughs> now, one other thing that absolutely guarantees that your prayer will be answered is you, you pray His will. You pray His will. And 1 John chapter 5, verses 14 to 15 makes that clear. 1 John 5, 14 to 15. And I read from the New King James Version. Now this is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we asked of him. Faith begins when the will of God is known. Faith commences when you know what the will of God is concerning the matter. So, if you can find out what God's will is about the matter, and you pray His will, then you can be 100% sure He will be answered. Amen. So let me give you an example. You are a young man and you are not married. And you desire in your heart to marry, or a young woman, you know, whichever way. You don't need to go and say, let's start the scripture. Does God want me to marry? Doesn't he want me to marry? You're a total waste of time. He has said that it is not good for man to be alone. So for those that will be alone, he will give them the grace for it. Like Apostle Paul. So if those were just unique circumstances. That was not the real, the mainstream thing. So you, we know that it's God's will for us to, to get married. So if you say, God, please guide me in my footsteps to who I should marry, you know you've prayed God's will. And you can be sure that if you are patient, he will answer you. <laughs> you get the idea. Or, Lord, I'm praying for my children to do well in school. And you're asking, Lord, is it your will that they do well in school? Wrong prayer. <laughs> you understand? You know that God wants us to do well in anything that we lay our hands on. So you just say, Lord, help my kids to do well in school. You are praying God's will. So you pray with that confidence. You understand? That absolute confidence that this is God's will for me. To be healed. To be prosperous. To be well. To do well. To, 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 to expand and establish and flourish. That's God's will for me. So when I'm praying for it, I'm not asking for too much. You understand? I'm not being greedy. I'm not being uh, presumptuous. I'm praying His will. So if you read God's word and you know him well enough, then you know what it is he desires for you. Yeah. That's why he says in Jeremiah 29, 11, I know the thoughts I think towards you. Mm. Thoughts of good, not evil. Mm. To give you a hope and a future. Amen. Can you see the way, you can see the way it links together. So, it, 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 some people say, oh, look, oh my, I'm out this headache. Maybe it's God's will to, to, to not let me go somewhere. Come on. God is not petty. Mm. He's not petty. That's why somebody who knows how to talk to God, you cannot talk about prayer and not go to King David. It's impossible. Because mm. that guy knew how to talk to God. <laughs> More than many of us. <laughs> mm. You know? And that's why he says in Psalm 32 verse 8, I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will guide you with what? My, My eye. eye. So when you want to pray God's will, you say, Lord, instruct me. Teach me in the way I should go. Guide me with your eye. That's a massive prayer right there. Because <laughs> that's God's will. He has promised it in his word, so you claim the promise and pray with it. Lord, instruct me. Another secret well, this King David, he had lots of secret, that guy. <laughs> Don't waste your sleeping time. Don't waste your sleeping time. 
I can see that we need to check the, the scriptures properly there. Mm -hmm. Something is going wrong there. But he says in his word, and we'll find what that scripture is for it later, that I think I made a mistake here, forgive me. But in another part of the scripture, it says, Lord, instruct me as I sleep. So that when you sleep at night, God instructs you. God instructs you as you lie down. So you don't make the sleeping just shutting your eyes and falling asleep. You actually... Ask God, as I go to bed now, all matters regarding my life, please instruct me as I go to bed. Because now I'm, you know, I'm, I'm calm now. So as I, as I sleep, please instruct me. Now moving on. Matthew 14, 23. This was Jesus' secret that many people were not aware of. Matthew 14, 23. And when he had sent multitudes away, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. Now, when evening came, he was alone there. there. Mm. So that means this man, he communed with his father over long periods of time. Away from the crowd, away from the noise, away from the distraction. That is another secret in, in praying effectively. Because some of us can't hear because we are in the midst of too much noise. We are in the midst of too much noise. So Jesus will just move, remove himself, go somewhere. Father, what do I do? Where do I go? Where do I turn? That's why he was telling us in the book of John, if you read the whole chapter of the book of John, he keeps saying at different places, everything I say to you are things I've had Jesus, uh, my father said to me. The things I do is what he's asked me to do. So what he's telling you that I've been well instructed in what I'm doing. I'm not just doing it willy-nilly. He has shown me a plan and I'm just carrying it out. And that's the way we should be. Hear God and carry out his plans. But we're always too impatient. Many people, we have something in their mind and say, God said it. I've cancelled many people like that. You know, they want something blue. So they say, oh, God would like me to have blue. God has not told them to, to have blue. Because their will is so strong, they trans translated that that will must be God's will. So, what are the, some of the practical tips that can help with prayer? If you can set a time for prayer, that would be wonderful. It doesn't have to be morning. It doesn't have to be evening. It's whatever is convenient for your scheduling. Because people have different schedules. But sometimes it's always helpful. I'll stand before the altar of God. I'm not perfect here. Sometimes I do it. Sometimes I don't. Sometimes I'm on my way to school, you know, or on my way to work or some runnings. But it will be good for you to have time that you pray to God. It helps. Build an altar with God. An altar means that you build a place into a place where you meet with him and he meets with you. It may be one corner in your house. It doesn't have to be anywhere elaborate. You understand the idea? But just something you say, you know what? I'll just go sit on this sofa in the morning, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, and I'll just commune with my father. That could be your altar. You understand? It doesn't have to be anywhere extravagant. That, oh, this is an altar we build and it's shining. No. Just a place that you say, where you dare, you know that I'm here to meet with God. It helps. You know, fill yourself up with God's knowledge so that people don't ask you to be praying for things that God may never answer. You understand? So make sure that it's things that God, that is within God's will. Pray according to God's will. And I guarantee you that you'll get results every single time. Amen. Amen. So the summary of what I've said today is that prayer is a dialogue. As you pray, you listen. As you pray, you listen. Sometimes it may be that you are reading the Bible and that answer will come to you. Mm. You have prayed yesterday about the matter and you are just reading about a totally different matter and in the midst of it, God will just sleep and answer right there to you. But you pray and you listen. Sometimes he talks to you immediately, but I can tell you 
from a lifetime of experience. Many times he doesn't. He is God. I don't know why he does that. I'm not knowledgeable enough to tell you why. But he's God. Sometimes you hear him immediately, especially when it's something dangerous and, 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 and impending that is, you know, it's imperative for him to stop you so that you don't kill yourself or something or your, or your loved one. But sometimes, many times, you have to wait. <laughs> <laughs> but how you wait, which we'll still talk about in, you know, in the future, is what differentiates whether you will get an answer or not. You have to wait by faith. You have to wait with assurance. You have to wait knowing that he's coming back to you. You are not waiting with fear and maybe God has not had me. No, mm -hmm. he has had me. You know, in due season, I will hear him. Mm -hmm. And you have to create an environment that enables you to hear him. May God help all of us to pray effectively in this month of March. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Stand to your feet. Let's pray. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Glory to God. Father, Lord, we thank you. Thank you, Jesus. We know that you are here in our midst. You are everywhere at all times. You only manifest yourself in chosen places. Lord, we pray that this month you will improve our prayer life. Amen. Help us, Father, Lord, to pray the way you have ordained us to pray. Amen. Help us, Father, Lord, to pray the right way so we can get the right results. Amen. Lord, we thank you. We remove thank every God. distraction. Amen. Everything that has not, you know, helped in any manner, shape, or form in, in, in hearing you. Lord, we remove it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. We pray that this month, O oh Lord, we'll be able to communicate with you more effectively. Amen. And we'll be able to have testimonies to show. Amen. That you have answered our prayers. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. 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 God bless you. Glory to God. Glory to God. Bless you, our grace. Glory May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, 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 the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Surely, His goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Amen. God bless Hello. you. Have an amazed week in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Everything you touch will prosper. Amen. Everything you ask God for, you will get results. Amen. I pray that you'll be effective in everything that you do. Amen. And your son, your righteousness will shine like the sun. Amen. And all the glory will go to God. Amen. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Amen.